economically active population in the northern region are engaged in agriculture. Welcome to the Ghanaian from the northern region edition. Specifically, we are in Tamale. Our first stop happens to be at Kujo, Abimash Farms. It's a commercial farm that is into different line of farming. We have the cereal, the livestock, the vegetables, fish pond, and what a view. We'll be uh, joined by the CEO, the group CEO, al Hadi Mashud, who was crowned last year the overall national best farmer here in Ghana. He is the owner of this farm. And we are seated among over 24,000 uh, sacks of varieties of cereal here. We'll be talking about that and more. I'm going for a quick breather. When I come back, he'll be joining me on set. This program is proudly brought to you by Lizzy Tomato Mix and Leaf Tomato Mix. And many thanks to our proud partner, Cocodile Matcha, they give us matcha to give out to farmers. And thank you to Cecil Technologies as well. He gave us um, a technology that you can use to test the moisture in your grains. Many thanks to you, Isaac. So we are going for a quick breather. When we come back, I'll have you join me on set. Stay tuned. <laughs> So today's interview is divided into two parts, part one and part two. So after the first one, that doesn't end our interview. We'll be back next week with the part two for you to understand the conversation and all that you need to know about farming in the northern region. Alhadi, thanks for having us in your warehouse. <laughs> thanks so much. Congratulations Mama. once again. Uh, thanks so much. You are doing so well. You're great. I appreciate that. And you that. tell me we have about how many bags of cereals here? Over the Ghana rice, the soya beans, the yellow corn, and white corn. How many bags do we have here? We have over 24,000 and counting. 24,000? Exactly. Wow. Congratulations mm -hmm. thanks once again. Thanks so much. Now, Alhaji. These are four different cereals we have right in front of us. Exactly. Now, we take it from the Ghana rice. Okay. How many acres of Ghana rice have you cultivated? This year, I cultivated 678 acres of Ghana rice. So, wow. So, and, and we have how many so acres have been, of soya beans? Soya bean, I had over 1,000... 374 acres of okay. soya bean. Yeah, and then maize too, I had 1,115 acres of uh, yellow maize mm -hmm. and then uh, with uh, white maize, okay. I had about 500 acres of white maize. Interesting. Yes. Alhaji, all these cereals have their duration, yes. their planting processes materials and everything yes. tell me how you manage all these four crops and harvest them at the end of the day you see I, in kujo abimash farms mm -hmm. i have a very dedicated staff okay so i am the ceo but i have managers in all the areas i do farming okay so my farms are not uh, located at the same place, okay. but they are located different different locations in the northern region. So basically, I do everything in northern region. I don't have farms outside northern region, but they are dotted around northern region. And again, I support so many outgrowers to produce all these things. But personally, the figures I've just mentioned mm -hmm. are what I, as uh, a farmer, cultivated. cultivated. Okay. But what the outgrowers do, possibly maybe we'll get there, I'll explain that one okay. to, to you. Right. So what I do is that, for instance, the rice farms, I have manager who oversees all the managers in, the, in all the farms. Okay. But every farm has a farm manager. Okay. For instance, in the rice farm, we have a farm manager. In the soybean farms, we have a farm manager. The maize, because they are almost the same term, we have a manager 
for that. Okay. Uh, so, and currently, as I speak, we have our 51 permanent staff okay. in the company. Right. So who does all these things for, for us? You. And mostly, why, and to some extent, maybe I may say this and you say, oh, so do we use labor? Yes, we use labor. Okay. We use casual labor too as well. Right. We have over 1,000 casual laborers working in all our farms. Okay. In our interviews, we've done Ghana rice and yeah. we have done maize. Yes. We'll come and talk about the difference between the yellow and the white maize. But our focus today will be on the soya bean. Exactly. Tell me about soya bean cultivation. Take me through the process. Yeah, soya bean cultivation, I would say, is one of the easiest uh, crop, even if we focus on, can earn Ghana so much money. Well, it's very easy. Mm. Well, soya bean, to some extent, doesn't even need fertilizer even though we do apply for more yields. Mm -hmm. But even if you cultivate soya bean without fertilizer, still you still make something. Soya bean, for instance, if you, uh, for instance, you have acquired your land. Yes. You plow mm -hmm. and then you, uh, you level. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that's what we call harrowing. Mm -hmm. you, you do your harrowing and then you plant. Mm -hmm. But with soya bean, it is, uh, because it's a legume, mm -hmm. It is very active to glyphosate, okay. which is normally called uh, locally condemned. Okay. So before we even plow, what we do is that we, we, we do weed control. Right. We spray first. Okay. When the first rains come, we do the first spray. Okay. Then we come, because currently what is happening in the world is that we are trying to promote so much, uh, we are trying to promote conservation agriculture. Okay. So... Uh, using Dix plows is being discouraged, mm. especially by the system of farming we are trying to do. And then because of climate change, we are now trying to see how we can manage our soils very well so whereby we will not be disturbing the soil every year. So if, it is, if the land is stumped this year, it means that you use Dix plow. Okay. If you have already cultivated several, you don't use Dix plow again. What you do is that you spray you wait for about a week mm. or 10 days. Mm. Then if you are using planters, what you do is that you just come and plant direct. Planters are machines that plant. Plants. Without uh, using your, your hand, hand to, to move do, step to by do. step. Uh, so okay. we are basically using uh, either mechanical mm -hmm. planter or pneumatic planters. Okay, which so, you have some in the Yeah, yard. we have. Okay. We we'll have be some. capturing that uh, for our viewers to know what planters Exactly. Are. So when we, when we spray, mm -hmm. then we, after 10 days, mm -hmm. we come and then sow. Okay. We don't do plowing, we don't do harrowing. Okay. We just sow direct because what we are trying to promote is we are promoting minimum tillage. Okay. We don't uh, what others call conservation agriculture. So we, we just uh, do minimum tillage. Okay. That is by planting. Right. The planters themselves do some little of tilling mm -hmm. and then the crops will be, will be, will be, will be planted. Okay. And then after that, mm -hmm. we do... Uh, Pre-emergency. Okay. The pre-emergency here is an herbicide, which we use to spray on the land. It is like uh, if I will explain it to viewers, mm. uh, it's simply uh, a particular herbicide which will make the grass, the seed mm -hmm. of the grass, mm -hmm. to go to fall asleep. Okay, it will not compete with the crop. <laughs> it will not compete with okay. the crop, so it will fall asleep. Mm. So the crop will grow before when when the strength of the herbicides go down, mm -hmm. then the 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 the, 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 the grass too will start okay. to to emerge. Okay, uh, but it doesn't affect the the crop. Okay, you understand. So this pre-emergency herbicide is for the grass. Mm. When we spray it, and it gets into contact with the grass, uh, the, the seed of the grass. You see, the seed of the grass will look like it has fallen asleep. It will not kill it outright. It will not kill it at all. So it will fall asleep. It will delay the germination of the grass. Okay. So the it will allow the crop, crop to grow. grow. Okay. Uh, so then, after that, we will, we will observe the, the plant for some time and see. Maybe in the course, maybe after two weeks or three weeks or one month, we see that the grass will begin to germinate. Then we then come with selective herbicide. That herbicide or that particular chemical we're using to control grass again is not uh, a herbicide which can affect the soybean at all. Okay. It will only suppress the 
the grass again. Okay. And then the soybean will grow. Okay. So after some time, mm -hmm. when the soybean forms canopy and other things, mm -hmm. it, it suppresses the grass automatically. Okay. And then uh, the, we'll be waiting until, until harvesting. Okay. Uh -huh. So that's why I said soybean is one of the cheapest crops we can cultivate. Uh, in Ghana. Okay. For Remind me again, how many acres did you say you have? I have 1,300. And in that case, yes. do you plant the soya bean just the way I'm seeing it like this, or there's a nursery done and then there's a transplanting? Done. No, how no, is no, it no. like that? You, like, you, you sow direct. You sow the seed bean? Seed direct. Like, okay. Direct. All right. but this, this soybean green, mm -hmm. we have soybean seed. Okay. Is, we don't just, what we, especially, uh, with government promoting high yields and then improved seeds, mm -hmm. what we normally do is that we don't plant what we harvested again. Okay. And there's a special, a special way of even cultivating the seed too, okay. uh, so which makes it so... So do you uh, have that here? Yes, yes, we have. We you have, have some Yes, here. we have okay, some Okay, we would have, when we go break and we're coming back, back, we'll show what you plant, plant and then what you will harvest. We'll harvest, exactly. Okay, so how many pieces of those do you plant to get the expected yield at the end of the day? Uh, in, per the acres you mentioned, yes, for so, someone to be able to know. Uh, you know, for in an uh, in an acre mm -hmm. of soya, mm -hmm. you need to plant about one uh, one hundred seventy seven thousand seed okay. seed okay. in an acre. Right. Uh, so so for you, time you multiply acres time. You are um, going to. But do. if we are to put it in 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 proper perspective, mm. we plant nine kilograms mm. per acre. Okay. We plant about nine kilograms per acre. Okay. So if uh, if you are planting uh, three acres mm. uh, or five, five acres, mm -hmm. you need forty-five kgs. Okay, all right, Alaji. After going through land preparation and all that you said before planting, using this uh, pesticide to reduce the weed from growing and competing and all that, how long are we waiting to start harvesting? Uh, you know, we have uh, about uh, Ghana for for now. Mm. We have our three main varieties okay. in Ghana. Okay. So, and all of this has different maturity periods. Okay, so let's For talk instance, about this one. For well, uh, we have Afayak, mm -hmm. Janguma, and Favor. Okay. Favor is the latest. Okay. And it's a small, it's the high yield. Right. So, it takes about 120 days. Okay. And then uh, we have Janguma, mm -hmm. which is an improved version. We, it was there mm -hmm. before they, they released favor. Okay. Uh, so that one too is about 120 days. Okay. And then we have Afayak, which is 91. Okay, so days. which one do we have here? Currently we have uh, Afayak here. This is Afayak. Yeah, this is Afayak. Okay. This is Afayak. All right. So, viewers, this is still the Ghanaian farmer. And this is the Northern Region Edition. Okay, Northern Region Edition. We are precisely in Tamale and we are seated inside. Abimash, Kujo Abimash Farms, and this warehouse takes as much as over 24,000 varieties of cereals. And my guest today happens to be last year's overall national best farmer, Alhaji Mashud. I'm going for a quick breather. When I come back, we'll talk more about Soya Bean here, the marketing, the challenges, and everything that you need to know when it comes to farming in the northern region. Stay tuned. Thanks for staying. If you just tuned in, you're watching The Ghanaian Farmer. My name is Zenyunam. You can get interactive on our social media platform. Send your questions and inquiries to the group CEO of Abimash Farms, Kujo Abimash Farms, and he will be glad to help you get more education. We are discussing the different types of cereals we have right here behind us we have the ghana rice we have soya bean we have the yellow corn and the white corn but our focus more is on the soya bean the marketability the challenges and everything that you need to know about this type of crop uh, so alaji you mentioned the one that you plant yes is different from what you harvest exactly thank you very much so uh my viewers this is what we plant it's different from what you harvest at the end of the day, but it looks very similar. That's very confusing. Yes, exactly. If I go to the farm or, uh, sorry, the market, yes. and I want to buy, if the owner selling does not explain, am I end up buying this? And the grain, and yes. And taking it to my farm. So <laughs> what, what's the difference? Yeah, what, one before what, we move what on? is happening is that mm. in every crop production, uh -huh. what is happening is 
we call to, we use uh, we have a breeder. Okay. Somebody who say uh, creates that the particular seed. seed. Okay. So we call him the breeder. Okay. So he used uh, gentaplasms and other things. They know what they do. Then they create the breeder seed. Okay. So he then gives it out okay. to other farmers who are special farmers. Right. They produce what we call foundation seed. Okay. So then the foundation seed too is used to produce certified seed. Right. And the certified seed is used to produce grain. So uh -huh. what we are holding here, uh -huh. this particular one, uh -huh. is called certified seed. Okay. Uh, so this is what government mm. supply mm. and the PFJ mm. to farmers. Okay. So if you use this one mm -hmm. to plant mm -hmm. and you use this one, mm. you see that you have higher yields from mm. this one than this. Oh, okay. Okay. But uh, that doesn't mean you cannot plant this. No, you can plant this, okay. but you will not get the expected, the, the expected yield. yield. Okay. Because it has gone, and this one may be even be contaminated. Mm. Yes. At the end of the harvest, do you get the quantity of yields you are expecting from the number of acres you've planted? Yes mm. and no. Okay. So the yes, yes. When all your agronomic practices uh -huh. and then rain, rains are very well, okay. you get the expected yield. Mm. Uh, but we call it the average yield. Mm. But you can't. It will be very difficult under our circumstance to get the average yield. For instance, with Janguma, uh, with uh, Afayak, they said we can get 3.4 metric tons per hectare. Okay. But it's not possible. Okay. It looks virtually impossible. Okay. Uh, but we get something closer. Mm. We get 2.7, mm. 2.4, 2.5. Uh, we do uh, get. Okay. So do you bag it directly from the farm and then just move it to the warehouse? Yes, yes. Because of transportation purposes. Mm. For, for instance, from where we are sitting to the farm, it's almost one hour, 30 minutes drive. Okay. So we bag it. You can see that we have not branded anything mm -hmm. here mm -hmm. in our name or anybody's name. Mm -hmm. We just bag them straight mm -hmm. from the farm to, to the warehouse. What kind of weather is very good for soya bean farm? Soya bean farming need, doesn't need so much rain. Okay. And then because of aflatoxin, mm -hmm. Soya bean harvesting should come closer to the dry season. Okay. So whereby you harvest it now mm -hmm. and then it will, uh, moisture will settle on it and then you get aflatoxin okay. in them. Okay. Uh, so uh, the weather in northern region mm -hmm. fits what soya bean need. It doesn't need too much rain. The rainfall pattern between nine, 900 millimeters to 1,100 millimeters mm. thereof. What kind of pests affect soya bean farm? We have so, viewers, we are not in the farm today, but we still need to know these basics about the soya bean farming. So just forgive me. Uh, it's because of the dry season also in the northern region. Unexpected fire outbreaks happening every now and then. So farmers who have planted, like I said, between June July last year, he's already done the harvesting around November December and so we are saying the harvested crop, but we still have to ask these basic questions like we are in the farm. So we're talking about the pest infestation. Yes, we have, uh, uh, for instance, what uh, insects mm -hmm. that disturb soya yes. bean. We have uh, some grasshoppers, okay. other insects are there. They are, I don't know how to describe them, even some caterpillars, mm -hmm. and even uh, they, also they, worry, they so worry, they worry a lot, but. Unfortunately, soya bean is very resilient okay. and very resistant yes. to so many uh, pests, yes. you understand? And like the time soya bean is flowering, mm -hmm. if we have persistent rains, mm -hmm. it affects our yield so much. I because see. soya bean uh, flowers are very, very delicate. Okay. And if we get so much rain, it washes them down. Ah. Uh -huh. So at the time of flowering, we don't even pray for rains okay. so much. We just need uh, some showers. Okay, uh, rain is okay. Uh, it's okay. I see. Uh -huh. so, okay. Uh, so unfortunately, you know, mm -hmm. uh, in North, uh, northern Ghana, we don't have those heavy, heavy mm. as we get them time to time. Mm. Now let's talk about bush fires. Yes. It, it's it's rampant in the northern region. Yes. You hear petty uh, peasant farmers, commercial mm. farmers, lamenting media coverage and all that. What causes it? How are uh, fire service people educating you people to manage this situation? W what happens? Yeah, yesterday. I was uh, at the Yana's palace. Mm -hmm. I called him, I uh, paid a courtesy call. Okay. And then I told him, what can we do mm -hmm. to stop this thing in the north? Mm -hmm. Because other people have succeeded in stopping it. Okay. So what can he do? Right. Or what will he do to help we the farmers? Uh -huh. too? You see, sometimes mm -hmm. farmers 
are not people who set the fire themselves. Okay. It's rather people outside those communities. They go to burn bushes there. Is it deliberate? Yes. Or they are chasing yeah, bushmeat? Yeah, meat? they are chasing bushmeat. So it's deliberate uh, because of bushmeat. Okay. Um, so fire service is our biggest enemy. I even made this comment several on several platforms. Because if you look at things, if Northern region were able to stop even bushfire for mm -hmm. five years, mm -hmm. all farmers in Ghana and Northern region would have been rich. I see. Yes, because... It costs it, a lot of Yes, harm. yes. Okay. Because like I, I said, in our case, we are promoting conservation agriculture. Right. And as we are promoting conservation agriculture, what we want to do is that we want to conserve the biomass mm. on the fields. Everything natural. Everything natural. So the, the debris, what we harvested and leave, mm. will serve as mulch on the soil. Exactly. You understand? So once it decays, mm -hmm. it adds nutrients, nutrients to, to the, the soil. soil. So if we're able to fight or to stop bushfire, yeah. it means that in the next five years, the soils will have been very fertile. Okay. And then the cost of investment will have gone down. Okay. I cannot have this interview and not touch on climate change or bushfire. as one of the major, major concern and challenge to farmers in the northern sector. And Alaji is making a difference by approaching Diana. Let's see what his voice added to his uh, attempt to create awareness. It might reduce it. We're going for another breather. When we come back, we'll not talk about warehousing. We'll talk about marketability. What he's investing is in making his returns. And if you're expecting to become a farmer in the northern region, what one or two secrets would he share with you? I'll be right back after this. Stay tuned. <laughs> With that, if you just tune in, you're watching the Ghanaian Farmer Northern Region Edition, specifically Tamale, and we are in Kujo Abimash Farms. This is one of their warehouse, and the CEO is seated right next to me. Remember, he is the 2021 overall national best farmer. So today, my guest <laughs> is a peasant farmer. He's a big <laughs> farmer. Alaji, yes. now let's talk about warehousing. Yes. We know that in Ghana, uh, NACO yeah. is helping some farmers, you know, have warehouse to stock their produce before taking it out for sale and all that. Are you a beneficiary of that, or this is yours personally? No, this warehouse is ours. It's for Kujo Abimaji. It's farms. privately yeah, owned. Yeah, it's privately owned. How it's much not... did it take to do this? Oh, let's say, uh, not less than one million Ghana cities. Yes, uh, less than one million Ghana cities. I see. Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, and how long did you put this together? Uh, how long did it take you? No, it was about, uh, within six months. Six months? Yes. Okay. It was about six months. Okay. Almost. I see. But now, when you keep this different cereals we have here, how long is he expected to be here before moved to the market for sale? Sometimes we keep it up to six or eight months. Before Six to eight, we, eight months. months. How are you able to test the moisture content in each? Is it, that's what I said. In in northern in northern region or in northern Ghana, mm. you see our weather looks very good. Mm -hmm. Straight from harvest, mm -hmm. we bag okay. and then we come and store. Okay. So because of that, mm -hmm. we don't need dryers okay. to dry our cereals. Mm -hmm. For instance, this one mm -hmm. was just taken straight from farm. Okay. And we have moist meters, mm -hmm. which we have less than 4%, okay. or something like 4% to 5% moisture in the distance, so which is very good for okay. safe keeping. Okay. 
all the cereals. Right. We don't dry them. Even if it is from farm, we come and then we, we saw direct. All we don't, right. We don't dry. Okay. Now, we'll, we'll talk about what it is like to be, to be a commercial farmer. Um, you've also won the overall mm. award well, yeah. in Ghana. Yeah. What has that done to Kuju Abimas fans? Yeah, you know, uh, like I said, I always say everywhere, if you are working and it happens that the whole nation recognizes your effort, inwardly, at least, you should just be too satisfied and happy mm. about what you have achieved. Because if, for instance, the president just even called you, even accidentally, you even have a handshake with the president, one day you even say it somewhere mm -hmm. and say, wow, I have ever... Shake the hand uh, of this president. Uh, this president, mm -hmm. you understand. Mm -hmm. But if the president intentionally mm -hmm. even calls you mm -hmm. to recognize you mm -hmm. on a national platform mm -hmm. and tells you that, wow, kudos to you, mm -hmm. you have done very well. At least you should know that you are really contributing something mm -hmm. and contributing something to the development of, of your own country. Mm -hmm. I don't think something is more satisfying than that. Mm. Uh -huh. And again, there was uh, something attached to the award. Mm -hmm. And then we are using it to expand support for broiler production mm. in the country. There were some benefits, yeah, benefits that came with our with award. With our award. Cash prices. Cash, yes, cash price. Uh, no. It was only cash price. Hey, there's no house. Did you get house? No, no, no. Did you no get house. car? No, no, I didn't. I didn't get a car. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, All right. They, they gave us. Uh -huh. they, they gave a hundred thousand Ghana cities okay. award. Okay. Which they decided we should use to expand our business. Mm. There's no house. Mm -hmm. Israel, there's, there's, there's a trip to Israel okay. for you to equip yourself. Right, learn with more than ways, ways of farming. Of, of doing farming. Okay. Uh, aside that, uh -huh. no, there's no house, there's no car. Mm. The third, the uh, second runner up had a car. Okay. The first runner uh, up had uh, a tractor. Oh, okay. And then the overall national best had six hundred thousand. Ghana cities. Uh, 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 I'll ask me and my team member, we will take our commission for you. <laughs> we will take it in Kepo. No, 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 we are here, we will take it for you. So, viewers, we are still having the conversation. Uh, I'm sorry, but my camera is saying, we have to go part two. We have to continue because there are questions I still have to ask, <laughs> yes. which I have not exhausted yet. So, let's continue with the part two of this interview next week with al -Haji talking more about these varieties of cereals we have here.